All right, so today we're talking about Trump. Trump is drafting an enemies list of Republicans for his Patriot Party to challenge in primaries, and already has 70 million in campaign cash on hand as he plots to squeeze GOP senators to avoid impeachment conviction. Hmm. I guess based on the title alone, the first thought would be, is this, as they say, more of an attempt by him to sway the vote I guess they're supposed to start the trial in a week or two, but is this an attempt to sway the vote to save his own skin, or is this something where he's legitimately looking to create change, to create a viable third party, something that puts Americans first, unlike what we see out of most Democrats and Republicans right now, is he looking for an America first party, or is he looking to save his own skin, some combination of, you could be doing both at the same time. Trump is reportedly pushing forward with his plan to create a new Patriot Party, believes it will give him leverage in Senate impeachment trial next month. He's already drafting an enemies list of Republicans to target in primaries. Reps Liz Cheney and Tom Rice, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, and Senator Lisa Murkowski are all on the list and could face Patriot Party challenges in 2022. And even though Mitch was just recently re-elected and Trump needs that vote, Mitch being the head of the Senate Republicans, Maybe don't want to put him on the list yet, but if Trump comes through and isn't convicted, then Mitch needs to go on the list. Sources say Trump already has $70 million in campaign cash on hand. His campaign raised millions after Election Day on his challenges to the results. We'll do something, but not just yet, he said at Mar-a-Lago on Friday. As stated above, the list is said to include the House's number three Republican, Rep. Liz Cheney of Wyoming, and there were ten in the House that voted against him, right? So you would think all of those individuals would be on the list who broke party ranks and voted to impeach Trump over his role in the January 6th Capitol tour. Mostly peaceful tour, by the way. Rep. Tom Rice, a South Carolina Republican, is on the list for the same reason. And individuals in deep Republican districts need to be weary because if they get primaried, MAGA runs deep in some areas, and I think it will be a test of the old guard versus the new guard. Not so much Trump, but the establishment versus the populist MAGA movement. That's how I see it. Same on the left is establishment left versus the new progressive type individuals that have been gaining seats here and there over the past couple cycles. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp is also reportedly on the list after provoking Trump's fury for refusing to back his challenge to the state's election results, which were certified for Biden. Senator Lisa Murkowski, an Alaskan Republican, who has signaled that she is open to voting to convict Trump, is also said to be a Patriot Party primary target. Kemp and Murkowski are both up for re-election in 2022. Maybe Murkowski, yeah, I don't know. If he, <laughs> if he's really going to come at her, and she's done anyway, she might as well just vote yes to convict, right? Because my feeling would be, regardless of which way she votes, she needs to hit the bricks. Trump advisors say they plan to recruit opposing primary candidates and commission polling as soon as next week in districts of targeted lawmakers. To fund his splinter party, Trump has more than $70 million in campaign cash on hand, the sources said it would be interesting. I know there's been points in time, obviously everybody knows Ross Perot. There's been points in time where independent party has been able to get several percentage points. Third parties, you know, Green Party, Libertarian, they generally pick up a point or two here and there, depending on the state. So it'd be interesting if all of this is what it took to get a viable third party. I hear people on the right saying, no, we don't want this. No, it'll crush the GOP forever, it'll ensure democratic victories all over the place. Possibly. It probably likely. Maybe for several cycles it does, but maybe this is what it takes to get a populist uprising. That maybe with these patriots, you can also draw away some of the populist individuals from the left to join and form a viable third faction. Obviously, the sting would be more so for the GOP, but... Maybe it's something where you force the GOP into the Patriot Party and to hopefully put Americans first for a change. 
you kind of see it in the way where, you know, on the other side of the aisle, where progressives, even though they have a little bit of power, they're really driving the party further and further to the left. So maybe it's something where even if they are able to just get a little bit of power, they can get more individuals on board. Like I said, populists from the left, the right, the center, libertarians, maybe scoop up all of those individuals that have been voting third party in the past, kind of coalesce that power together, and then create a situation where there's actually a party that, that puts Americans and American values first. Well, just a thought. Let me know what you think about this. I'm sure that a lot of you have some thoughts about it, you're probably kind of conflicted. Especially if you're on the right, you're like, oh, well, I don't want any Democrats to win, but what good's a Republican winning if it's Mitch McConnell? If it's somebody like that, if it's somebody like a Murkowski or a Liz Cheney, do you want that? Or would you rather try to sacrifice in the short term, play the long game? Interesting to think about, right? Though the Trump campaign was essentially tapped out on election day, the campaign and several allied groups raised $207 million between November 3rd and November 23rd, fundraising on his push to challenge the election results. The number is certainly higher by now, but hard numbers won't be disclosed to the Federal Election Commission until January 31st. Much of Trump's fate in the Senate trial will rest in the hands of Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who has been cagey about his plans, but publicly rebuked Trump after the Capitol tours were given, saying that Trump had provoked the mob. McConnell will have to weigh the exodus of corporate donations away from the GOP in the wake of the riot against the risk of infuriating and alienating Trump's base by voting to convict. A vote to convict could split the party, but some see it as the only way to unify Republicans by banishing Trump to the sidelines by removing the source of the tensest divisions. A conviction would allow the Senate to bar Trump from holding federal office again, ensuring Republicans would be able to put forward a slate of non-Trump candidates in their 2024 presidential party. So to that point, kind of to further add a little bit of a thought to it is, my feeling is Trump's name and his brand are so tainted. Media, you can tell me about lies, truth, and this and that. The media has tainted his brand so much. You see corporations backing away. What was the golf course in Palm Beach was trying to kind of distance themselves from it. You had Bedminster, they lost the PGA Tour stop in 2022. So there's been a lot of other things that have gone on. They took the My Pillow Guys pillows out of Bed Bath & Beyond and Kohl's, come on now. But the name has been so tainted and assuredly anything he attaches his name to would be tainted as well because I'd be willing to bet that the mainstream media, that anybody that runs under the Patriot Party, that they'd get the same labels as Trump does. Even if you're black, gay, Hispanic, Asian, female, whatever it is, multiracial white identity, isn't that what they called it? Multiracial white identity, I believe is what they referred to it as. So my feeling is the brand has been tainted so bad by the media that he can't be the face of it. With his ego, <laughs> if he's not convicted, I don't see it being a situation where he would just step back. I could see what he'd be working for in 2022 at the local, state level, and all of that. I could see a path for that, but I can't see him being the head of the ticket. I could see him being out there rallying and campaigning for individuals, generating the buzz. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have some strong feelings about this. I just think with the way that it's tainted that you need to look to the next generation of MAGA-type America First folks. The events in the Capitol on the 6th, the way the media has kind of pushed it into people's minds, the only thing they're going to think about it is, he's the guy. He was the guy that led the insurrection. And I don't know that you can recover from that. I think that any third party that could be viable long-term, you have to start somewhere, right? Opening arguments of the trial would begin the week of February 8th. Meanwhile, the widening split in the Republican Party was on evidence on Saturday in Arizona, where state GOP officials voted to censure John McCain's widow, Cindy McCain, and two other prominent Republicans who bashed Trump's election fraud claims. The censures of McCain, former Senator Jeff Flake, and Governor Doug Ducey are merely symbolic, which is true, but they show strong elements of the party are focused on enforcing loyalty to Trump, even in the wake of an election that saw Arizona inch away from its staunchly 
Republican roots. And you could say enforcing loyalty to Trump, or you could also say enforcing loyalty to MAGA and populism. Because I could say, well, I'm America first. I'm a patriot. I'm MAGA. But I maybe I don't align with Trump and his values and his beliefs. So I always am able to separate the two. That's for myself. Maybe you equate them all together, though, and it seems like the media wants to as well. I think they're different. Party activists also re-elected controversial chairwoman Kelly Ward, who has been one of Trump's most unflinching supporters and among the most prolific promoters of his baseless allegations of election fraud. The, G the Arizona GOP's combative focus has delighted Trump's staunchest supporters and worried Republican insiders who have watched the party lose ground in the suburbs as the influence of its traditional conservative establishment has faded in favor of Trump. And I would just say this, though. If you are losing ground in the suburbs and with traditional conservative establishment type folk in favor of Trump, as they say, where are they going to go? Honestly, it's the same way with the left, where there are those individuals who claim to be liberal as their party's getting pushed and pushed further left. Sure, many jump ship, walk away movement, right? Where are these individuals going to go? If you're really a traditional conservative, where are you going to go? <laughs> you can't join that Democratic Party that exists right now. There is no place for you. You can become a libertarian, though. That's probably your best bet. You're going to be a never-Trumper? You're going to vote Biden just to stick it to Trump and other Republicans that do support Trump? Is that really your play? If you're really one of these individuals that they're referring to, traditional conservatives, is that how you stick it to Trump? You vote Biden? <laughs> That's not going to work out well for you long term. Their values do not align with your values in any way. A growing electorate of young Latinos and newcomers bringing their more liberal politics from back home have further hurt the GOP. This is a time for choosing for Republicans. Are we going to be the conservative party, said Kirk Adams, a former state house speaker and chief of staff to Ducey, or is this a party that is loyal to a single person? And again, it's what I said, they don't seem to get the movement. It's a populist movement, MAGA, more so than Trump. Now, there are Trump loyalists, don't get me wrong, but I think that even if, and I could be wrong, I could be totally way off base, you can tell me what you think about this, but I think that if Trump weren't the figurehead, that the movement continues, but it needs energy and money behind it, obviously. It's a question of Republican identity that party officials and activists are facing across the country following Trump's 2020 loss, and particularly after, they're going to tell me about this 15 times in this article apparently, like we don't know what happened that day, Cindy McCain endorsed Biden and became a powerful surrogate for the Democrat following years of attacks by Trump on her husband. And I guess there you go. I guess it's possible if you were conservative at one point, we'll assume she was, that if you don't like somebody that's on your team supposedly, say the Republicans in this case, that you'd be willing to totally sell out everything and totally take on values that aren't your own just to try to stick it to the guys. It's interesting, right? After the censure vote, she wrote on Twitter that it is a high honor to be included in a group of Arizonans who have served our state and our nation so well. I wear this as a badge of honor, she wrote. Also after the vote, Flake tweeted a photo of himself with McCain and Ducey at Biden's inauguration and wrote, good company. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. It says here Flake was one of the few that was critical of Trump. He declined to run for re-election in 2018 and endorsed Biden in last year's election, so he's a Democrat now. Take a look at a couple comments. They are all over the place. I took a look here first. He's got them by the balls. That's uh, speaking of Trump. One here says Trump's threat is illogical. Either vote not to convict or he'll start a third party. But by not voting to convict, that would actually allow Trump to create and run as a third party in 2024. 70 million isn't anything if you're running from a jail cell. Wow. So now are the Republicans under his thumb? Hmm. Interesting. He is the swamp. Boo. What garbage. Can't wait to change. All right. So there you go, everybody. Patriot Party. My thoughts I've given ad nauseum. <laughs> so I won't rehash it too much, but just to say that I think this could be a good thing long term. It's going to take a lot of short term effort and there could be some pain that comes with it. But if there's a party that actually puts Americans first, coalesces its power, 
amongst individuals out here like you and I that most likely believe the same thing, that Democrats and Republicans are full of shit and they serve their masters overseas in China, globalism being what it is. It'd be great to have a party that serves the people of the United States and puts us first, doesn't send our money overseas, sell our jobs out overseas, and doesn't have policies in place that hurt the American workers. I don't think I'm asking too much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and be well.